One, one in three women and one in four men have been victims of some form of physical violence by an intimate partner within their lifetime. Two, every nine seconds, a woman is assaulted or beaten somewhere in the United States. Three, in the time it took me to say all this, three more women became victims of domestic violence. I'm Mayor Lori Gill, and this is City Limits. One in three women and one in four men have been victims of some form of physical violence by an intimate partner within their lifetime. One in five women and one in seven men have experienced severe, life-threatening levels of violence, but perhaps most heartbreaking of all. 90% of all domestic violence assaults, children are eyewitnesses to the violence, 90%. Today we're visiting with Missouri Shores Domestic Violence Center in Pier to speak with Executive Director Cami Martz. Hi Cami. Good morning Mayor, how are you? I'm good. good. Thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for having us. Yeah, it's very important that we are able to talk about the important work of Missouri Shores and get the word out and let the community know that there's a need and that you do a lot of work here. So uh, thank you, this is going to be a great show. The statistics that I've just been talking about are stunning. And one in three women, one in five men nationally have been victims of some sort of abuse. It's hard to believe, but let's talk about that. Um, is that true? Th that is very true. And actually, I would probably believe it to be higher because on an average, it takes a woman being abused at least seven times before she even calls for help. Um, you're always very hopeful. Uh, there's promises made, there's kids involved, there's financial reasons, there's all kinds of reasons, religious reasons. And so I actually, in all of my time of 11 years working with victims of domestic violence and survivors, I would feel it would be higher. So Okay, and that's very sad, mm -hmm. but all those things that you just described are true reality. Yes, very much reality. You know, life happens and you have to figure out what's the best not only for themselves to stay safe but their children oftentimes as well mm -hmm. and we talk about abuse what is the definition that you're using the definition of abuse to us is anybody that is living in the same household or relation as in blood becomes domestic violence um, and it, physical hands um, a lot of times verbally threatening to harm someone either by taking their life or taking one of the children's lives those are all forms of violence all right and when we talk about the statistics we were talking national statistics but do you see that same sort of thing here in central south dakota yes i do i i believe maybe even central south dakota is higher because we are more of a uh, a grassroots state yet where we're still very much family oriented with the things that we do and families sometimes out in the rural areas don't have as much to do so I feel that it it might be a little bit higher in the state of South Dakota and with neighbors um, we can reach out more towards each other or sometimes neighbors still are under the thought process of you will do what it takes to keep your family all right so. okay so uh, most of our viewers are aware of the work that Missouri Shores does in this community um, and that may be or may not be uh, aware of everything that goes on there so let's talk about the work that you do so everybody understands the breadth sure. of the work you bet well we have four full-time staff members and we served last year 834 clients so the ladies that I work with are very busy all the time um, very little downtime we have a very important 24 7 crisis line and so we always rotate the phone and have it all always with us. Um, one of the main things that people would recognize Missouri Shores would be the shelter. So we have nine client family rooms that we're able to pro provide safe shelter and protect those clients that come into us. And within, they, they check in for 30 days. They don't always stay that entire time. The average is around 14 days. And I always say that that's amazing to me because if you, basically need to leave your safe home where, where homes are supposed to be safe. Sometimes they are not safe and that's where we come in. But they leave their home, they come with their children, sometimes they come individually. But our goal is to get them back to a normal level of living where they can continue to live life, 
Um, so we like to get them into apartments, keep the kids going to school, mom keeping her job or getting a new job. Sometimes the abuse is so severe we need to relocate them. And so we work with the shelters, not only in the state, but the entire nation to relocate families if we need to. And I would say at least twice a month we're doing that. So it's, it's very serious, the work that we do at Missouri Shores, for the safety of not only the family we're trying to help, but staff and the community as well. Because abusers do not care how they get to the, their, their family because the most dangerous time is leaving. And so Missouri Shores is the spot where they often leave too. Um, so we help with that. We do protection orders, stocking orders, crisis intervention counseling, food, 100%. Everything there is free to the, the victims when they come into us. So they just need to really focus on staying safe. And, and um, there's, there's lots of other things that go into this. And, and so it's just, it's just a very busy scenario with a lot of crises involved and working through them and counting on law enforcement and, and attorneys within town to help us to make sure that we are doing the best service we can. All right, so Missouri Shores is located here in Pierre, but you, I uh, would assume, have a catchment area we do. that you serve? Yep, we have six counties that is our catchment area, and so that is Hughes, Hyde, Sully, Stanley, Hawkin, and Jones counties, and we have a rural advocate that goes out to those counties as well at least once a month, and the reason that we do that is because sometimes victims of domestic violence don't have the ability to have the financial needs to get fuel and get to peer or abusers won't allow them the freedom to do that so we want to make sure that we can be somewhere that they can get to us in that the, the more uh, rural areas mm -hmm. so of the 800 some people that you serve in one year um, I'm assuming the uh, largest percentage is from peer that, yes that's correct yep. okay and uh, remind me again how many other domestic violence centers are there in the state? There's around probably 26, I think, yeah. domestic violence centers in the state of South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And Pierre is one of the bigger facilities. Um, we don't have the biggest community, but we have a very big catchment area. And um, in 1996, I believe, 97, was when we were purchased our uh, shelter and brought it from Oneida and had nine client rooms. And our shelter is the only one in the state that has their own bathroom in every room. Okay. And so that makes it very private for, for the ladies and the children that stay with us. And we assist men as well. We have a, a motel that we contract with to do that because men are victims of domestic violence as well. All right, now uh, let's talk about when Missouri Shores was established. I'm sure that uh, at that time this was groundbreaking. Yes. Very. And um, something in this part of the mm -hmm. state that hadn't happened before, and like you said, our culture yes. and the way that we are here in the family orientation, it probably was a huge thing to mm -hmm. start something like this. It was. In 1979 is when some of the community members got together and decided we're going to start basically a grassroots organization. And at that time, they were actually putting victims up in their home. Mm -hmm. And then they uh, provided safe shelter by a rental unit over by the Capitol. And that lasted until 1996, 97, when we were able to get our, our, our place that we're currently at. Um, but the forward thinking was so much that part of the mission statement says to protect and serve. And oftentimes people just think that domestic violence is to protect them. Well, we protect them in the beginning, absolutely, the whole community needs to be involved in that. Holding abusers accountable, letting somebody know that it's not okay what you're doing, and oftentimes abusers will turn it around that it's the victim's fault. And mm -hmm. so the community needs to be educated in the fact that no, no, that's not the victim's fault. Um, it's not the children's fault. It's, it's your fault for choosing those actions. But the mission statement actually has protect and serve in it, and the serve part is where we continue to get them resources, um, move them forward so they don't feel like their only option is to go home. So does part of that involve uh, getting, uh, let's say if the example was a single mother that mm -hmm. had children that n had never had a job, getting them Absolutely. the types of skills they need yes. to move on? Absolutely, we work well with the uh, South Dakota Job Service here. Um, staff, we, Goodwill has resume building, we have t d a lot of different nonprofit agencies that we work with to make sure that we move them in the area of where they need to be. Um, and oftentimes we find that the ladies are so, so excited to be able to provide for themselves 
that we have no problem getting them lined up with work. And there's plenty of work to be had. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go back to the violence center, the actual shelter. Yes. Uh, it's an und undisclosed location, mm -hmm. obviously, for the security reasons. But what is it like having to operate a facility like that? Because really, it's 24-7. Yes, yes, it is. Well, it, in the good old days, before the internet and Google, we were very undisclosed. Now you can basically find any shelter in the United States. And so we're aware of that, and all of the shelters have decided that we are, are out there, we're part of the community. We're no longer something that's hidden anymore because domestic violence has always been treated like if we don't talk about it, it doesn't happen. Well, it does happen, and it happens often and actually more times than we know. So we've decided with not being able to be hidden anymore, maybe that's, that's the route we need to take. So we're, we're ramping up security at most of the centers. Um, we have alarm systems and the doors are more secure and, and people need to be buzzed in at all times. So we feel like we're with the technology. We may not like where it's going, but we're not gonna stop that. And, and so we're just on board with making sure that we're, we're up to speed and we're, we have very good working relationship with the police department. Let's talk about that a second. The Peer Police Department um, is right here in the community, and I know you do have a close working relationship. Yes. Uh, so talk about the importance of that. Yes. Well, we, we have to be on the same page with the police department. Mm -hmm. One thing that people understand to be maybe be the difference between domestic violence shelters and the local law enforcement is law enforcement shall make an arrest. And when people come to us, it's their choice if they want to report it. And the reason that those are different is because we don't want a victim and her family or kids or individual or a man to say, I'm not going there because I don't want to report it. And, and it can be very scary to report victims of abuse or the, the abuse that's happening because sometimes the accountability through the court systems isn't where it should be to keep the victim safe. So they have to weigh out all the factors. If I report this, will in fact there be charges that are pressed because because evidence has to be the it has to just all work and so it's hard for a victim to to rationalize do i just get the help and maybe they're not quite ready to leave yet either so there's so many factors that go into play and and the police department do the best they can of course the court system does the best they can and so does missouri shores but the one thing we always go back to as part of the serve the victim is they know their abuser better than any of us so if they tell us that I can't poke the bear, so to say, then we listen to them and figure out, well, how can we keep you safe until you, you, you are ready to report it. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Now, you mentioned the fact that technology is changing yes. and that has changed the way that things operate. But another thing that has changed is stalking. Very much. And people have a lot of ways to stalk mm -hmm. another person. Talk about how stalking in general by both men and women has changed what you do. Well, one, one of the ways that it has changed is that people can be located at all times. When ladies come to our shelter, we make them turn the location off on their phone. Sometimes we have them shut that phone down and we give them a different phone so just family member knows where it's at. We've had spyware be put on their phones. Um, and with staff, we need to keep up on that so we go through their phones and make sure that there's none in there. Um, we've had a victim who absolutely had her plan worked out perfectly, but the abuser still knew where she was and that was our first case of the spyware on the phone and new texts that were going through and so knew her plan basically as she was developing it. Um, and then, of course, Facebook. Um, when people post on Facebook, sometimes it will post the location that you're at, mm -hmm. and so we have to be very vigilant about that. We sometimes ask them, maybe don't be on Facebook for a while until you make sure you're safe. Um, and then, of course, I guess anymore, people feel like the connection of communication, of being one-on-one -on -one with somebody, when you're not like that, it's much easier to be more um, inappropriate and rude and say hurtful things and so the internet has kind of an access to that and making stalking and bullying and all that kind of out of control. Mm -hmm. So it just feeds into the whole Absolutely issue. Absolutely does, yes. And oftentimes, you know, the woman, if we've had women that men are getting arrested and, and somehow when the cops are there on their ride to the police department they are posting on Facebook that they're gonna kill her. And so then of course we print screen that so the law enforcement can see what's going on but 
that's that's just outrageous to me that somebody's worried about killing because killing the person that they're assaulting when really they're the one being arrested. They, they don't even wrap their brain around about that it's their issue, not the person that they've hurt. All right, so historically, abuse and viol uh, domestic violence uh, was thought of as a woman's issue, and we know now, and you've already referred to yes. it, that it's a man, it mm -hmm. can be a man's issue as well. Uh, has that changed then your operations at Missouri Shores? We've always assisted men. Mm -hmm. um, we've had men come in with children, we've had the women and children, we've had individuals come in. So it hasn't changed our operation because we know anybody can be a victim. Um, nobody signs up to get into a relationship where they might be assaulted or, or be put in the hospital or need to go into hiding. So when people come to us, we will help them if, if that's what they're requesting from us. So now we've talked a lot about the back end of mm -hmm. violence when it's happened and someone's developed a plan and needs a place to go. Um, but what can we do in the area of prevention yes. and how much time do you spend working on prevention? Right, we, like I said, we have four full-time staff members and we usually are able to hit all of the high schools in our community and go in and do presentations. Um, so we last year we provided 19 presentations to the different communities and civic um, groups, churches, um, individuals, stay-at-home moms. So the best that we can do, and even today we're talking about it, is education and hoping that if they ever need to, they can recognize some of the signs or at least know who to call. We've had a lot of people call for a friend. We've had a lot of moms and dads come in because they're very concerned about their daughter or son's relationship and don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Because the old saying is, if I tell them no, that's going to make them push them further to keep dating this person or, you know, mom and dad doesn't know best. And so they really look to us to guide them. And so sometimes it can be years of abuse. And so we ask the parents, if you can get that person to us, you need to rest. You are emotionally overwhelmed with this. You are bought in with your love. Bring them so we can professionally help them see and we often will have women that have been through the abuse that will come in and kind of mentor this young person or this new person to leaving because then they see hope. They see that this can be done and they see they're not alone. Abuse is very much, I feel alone, like this is not happening to anybody else and it's a private affair. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard to come forward. All right, well the work that you do uh, is many, has many facets mm -hmm. and uh, you, uh, are working hard to keep women safe and to realize they have options and yes. choices and men mm -hmm. women and men both together yes. they people have choices mm -hmm. now let's uh, flip for a second we have Jeff Filipek here who is a, a board member and has been involved for a number of years with Missouri Shores so welcome Jeff thank you so talk about being on the board for this uh, wonderful facility and entity well, it's enjoyable working on a board with such a, a cause-driven mission. Um, you know, it's challenging. I know it was my first year on the board, I was like, this is a really depressing conversation. <laughs> and a, a lot of board members come in feeling that way. We don't hear details, of course, but uh, we hear some of the client stories, and it can be heartbreaking sometimes. So it's important for me to give back in that volunteer way, and I think it's especially important for men uh, to be involved in an organization like this that stand up and say you know, enough is enough and we need to make some change. Mm -hmm. And so I understand there is an endowment fund that's connected with uh, the whole operation? Yes, uh, we have a very engaged board, uh, very passionate people and uh, strategic thinkers as well. So we've done quite a few facility and uh, other engagement things, but uh, you know, fiscal responsibility is a big part of our board. and. Uh, Grants come and go, funding come and comes and goes, contributed dollars come and go. So it's really important that we have a strong foundation for Missouri Shores so it can sustain over the long haul. So if we have viewers that are touched by what they're hearing and realize that this is something they want to affect in some way, what would your recommendation be to somebody that wants to get involved or make a difference? Sure, well we have an annual giving program that people can contribute on an annual basis. Uh, and it helps sustain the, the mission and the operations of the Missouri Shores. But long term, if people want to think of us in plan giving um, and their estate planning and things like that, that's how they can make a tremendous impact uh, um, with the Oahe Foundation and now recently with the South Dakota Foundation, we have two funds. So a couple of venues for, 
for people to contribute to the Missouri Shores. And do you have uh, an ongoing effort right now? Uh, any goals that you're working to reach? Yes, we just uh, opened up a new fund with the South Dakota Foundation and we've set a million dollar goal to reach. So we've got a, a lot of challenge in front of us, but uh, the board's excited about it. And, and most importantly, we have a really strong staff. Cammie and her staff are, uh, where they do the day-to-day -day functions. And as a board, we feel lucky to have that staff. All right, so when you're uh, trying to reach a goal like that, one way that uh, people can make a difference uh, over the holidays would be to give to that uh, effort and uh, maybe even give in someone else's name uh, to try to make this uh, an effort that's reached fairly quickly. Sure, I mean, we're, we're happy to take, like I said, annual gifts, gifts in memoriam, mm -hmm. uh, dedicated gifts, uh, any, anything to help the organization. All right. Well, I just want to thank both of you for what you're doing to help women and men in Central South Dakota stay safe. Uh, the work that you're doing is uh, fantastic. Um, it's too bad that you exist. Um, it's but a bittersweet. That's because right. Because we know that they're out there, and actually when they come through the door, it's relief to us because mm -hmm. we, we know they're safe. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for what you're doing to keep thank everybody you. safe and get the word out. Mm -hmm. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Get a pen and paper ready. We're going to give you a phone number in just a moment. You can do something about domestic violence. Domestic violence is a crime protected by people's silence. Speak up. Add your voice. Be heard. Men, women, children, it affects all of us, and we are doing something about it. Silence is not an option. I'm Mayor Lori Gill. Welcome to 2016. We're off with another season of City Limits, and we have a lot to show you in upcoming programs. So until then, thanks for sharing some of your time with us, and we'll see you soon.